Welcome to the third part of week three. In the previous two parts, I've discussed synapses. Now I would like to turn to dendrites. Indeed, dendrites are interesting. Neurons of different type have different dendrites. There are various shapes. And the question arises, can we include the shape of dendrites into our modeling framework? As I said, neurons come in different types, and different types have different shapes. Here's a first interesting example, a pyramidal cell in neocortex. The surface of the cortex would be up here, and the cell body sits in one of the deeper layers. It's a pyramidal cell because the cell body is shaped like a pyramid. Here's another pyramidal cell in hippocampus. This is the shape of a Purkinje cell in cerebellum. These Purkinje cells are rather special because nearly all the dendrites end in a very narrow plane. So it's a nearly two-dimensional shape, a fan-like extension. Here we have a motor neuron and here we have a stellate cell in cortex. So we have all these different shapes. And the question is, these shapes, this morphology of cell, can we take that into account? Can we include that into our neuron models? When I talked about biophysical models, when I talked about the Hodgkin-Huxley model, we focused on a piece of the cell membrane, and this piece of the cell membrane could be a piece of the dendrite. In the cell membrane of the dendrite embedded are ion channels. These ion channels can open and close, and if they are open, ions can flow in the cell or can flow out of the cell. So now let's take this kind of picture. Like, let's take this kind of pyramidal cell and let's rotate it by 90 degree and stretch it out a little bit. So after we have turned the neuron, it looks like this. We've also stretched it out a little bit. And now we focus on one segment of the dendrite. And just as in the Hodgkin-Huxley model, this segment of the dendrite will be described by some capacitance and different ion channels. Now, this is just a segment here. But of course, there's another segment sitting right next to the first one, which will have a very similar circuit diagram. Now, these different segments are not isolated. They are connected, they talk to each other, and the longitudinal resistance reflects the fact that electric charge can flow along the dendrite, and this flow of electric charge corresponds to a longitudinal current. This longitudinal current cannot flow freely. The liquid in the dendrite and the composition of the membrane corresponds to a certain resistance for this longitudinal current. Now with these elements, these different segments, is it now possible to write down a model for the dendrite as a whole? And I will lead you now through a few steps of calculation. So let's focus on the current onto this segment here. This is my current I. And because of conservation of current, this current has to split some of it goes as a capacitive current onto the capacitor. Other parts go through the different types of ion channel. So the total current is the capacitive current and the sum over all the different currents through the various ion channels. Now, this is just the current at one segment. This segment here is my segment at location x. So this would be the current at time t at location x. So i of t and x has a capacitive current at location x and all these ionic currents specific for this location x. We know from previous lectures 
that the capacitive current can be written as C, the capacity, the capacitance, times d dt of the voltage u of t and x. And I copy the rest. So, this would be the total current at this segment at location x. Now, what can I say about this total current? Well, the kernel might, this current here might arise from the fact that an experimentalist, and that an experimentalist injects a current at this location, an external current. So, the current could arise from current injection by an experimentalist. However, that's not the only contribution, because, as I mentioned before, there's a longitudinal current through this longitudinal resistor, and this longitudinal current I will denote as IL, and that's longitudinal current at my location X. But there's also a longitudinal current leaving my segment, and this is the longitudinal current in my next segment. The next segment is at location x plus dx. So, this location here is x plus dx, the location on the dendrite. So, the total current here will be this external current plus the longitudinal current minus the current that's leaving this segment, which is the longitudinal current at x plus dx. The longitudinal current has to pass through this resistor. So what can I say about this longitudinal current? Well, according to Ohm's law, the current is related to the resistance and the voltage. The voltage in it, this segment is U of T and X. The voltage in this segment is U of T and X plus DX. This voltage is also the voltage up here at these points. That means the voltage difference for this resistor, the voltage applied at this resistor is U of Tx minus U of Tx plus dx and the current is 1 over R L. The same type of reasoning can be applied to this part here. The voltage here would be the voltage at location X minus TX and this current therefore is U of T X minus TX minus U of T X again divided by RL. I add the external current and then I have this total current. I can rewrite this by saying that the RL, this resistance here, longitudinal resistance, is the same as this RL here. So I have a single big denominator, RL. Then I have here U of T X minus DX. 
minus u of t x. Another minus u of t x gives a factor of 2 here, plus u of t x plus dx. So this is the total current. This is my expression of the total current flowing down here. But the same current is also described by this first equation up here. So I have an equality and I can copy the start equation c times d dt u of t comma x plus the sum over all these ion channel currents t and x. Now this is the final equation which describes the current flow along the dendrite between different segments of the dendrite and the current flow through the membrane through through the membrane into the outer extracellular space.